For maximum entertainment, enter full screen mode now. Enjoy the show. This is Watch Me Anime. Select your character. Jago selected. Select your mode. Welcome back to the channel, my friends. This is Watch Me Animate episode number 16. My name is Jonathan Abenheim, and today we continue where we left off in part one, where I created a vanilla run cycle on 180 frames that I will be using to build our cinematic. Now it is time to bring this shot to life, and the way I'm gonna do that is by adding in a lot of secondary animation. In my imagination, Jago is running for his life, and he's looking around to make sure there are no bad guys chasing him. The first step will be to establish an interesting pattern where I can see him turning around to look for the bad guys. And I'll do this by adjusting the comm and the head curves. Now, the comm is driving the body, but I'm also adjusting the head as well, simply because I just wanna see where Jago's head is looking. It's just easier to see his head turning and looking around. In the graph editor, you can see the first pass on this pattern. I'm happy with it, so let's continue. All right, so in the first pass, I animated the comm and the head. Now, the comm is generally the driving force I like to start with, as you know if you're a fan of this channel. But in certain circumstances, such as this one, the driving force will switch from the comm to the head. You see, wherever the head is looking is where the body will naturally follow. So I'll continue to make more adjustments on the comm's pattern based on where the head, our new driving force, is looking. I'll also continue to advance the head with more secondary animation. Essentially, Anytime Jago is looking in the same direction for an extended amount of time, I'm going to break up that stare by either making him look a little more up, a little more down, a little left, a little right. There's no exact formula for this. I literally watch the animation playback and loop hundreds of times, if not thousands, uh, while I make real time adjustments to the head using the F curves. Now, sometimes I get this on the first try. Sometimes it may take a few minutes or even a few hours, depending on the complexity of the shot and how many coffees I had that day. <laughs> Hey, you said the magic word, John. Coffee. Now, <laughs> keep in mind, if you ever hear the word coffee in future episodes, I might pop up trying some cool new things out here on the uh, on these episodes, as you can see. I hope you're enjoying it. I wanted to just jump in and, and just remind you, as you're watching me go through this cinematic run, I'm using the straight-ahead layered method. It is a very advanced method that takes years to master. And keep in mind, I might make it look easy, but I've been at this for... The, the real number is 20. It sounds crazy. I like to stick to like 15 plus because that just sounds better to me, to my ears. But the truth is I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm going to be going 21 years. So I've had a lot, a lot of practice with runs and walks and jumps and all the body mechanic animations that you can imagine. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say I probably have done close to maybe a thousand walks and runs and all that good stuff through all my career. You know, it's just... You have to practice, practice, practice. Just keep that in mind. I don't want you to think that it's easy and just switch from whatever technique or method, whether you're using post to pose or a combination of both, a hybrid. Do what works for you and things will just naturally uh, unlock as you keep practicing. So keep that in mind. That's my little coffee talk for you guys. I will see you soon. Enjoy the show. Moving on, as I continue to dial in the pattern, this time I'm adjusting the calm and the spine. Notice how many times the animation is looping in this time lapse. The video is actually sped up 674% for obvious reasons, uh, but the point I wanna make is that I'm adjusting in real time as I continue to watch the animation play back hundreds and hundreds of times, if not thousands, to make sure that the pattern feels good. What makes a pattern feel good, you might ask? Well, stick around and I'll tell you. Now 
that Jago's head is driving this animation, I'm gonna use the rotation of his head to help me animate both of his arms. By that I mean, I'm gonna use the body language of his run to help me position his arms in such a way that reflects real world body mechanics first. And then I'm gonna just make sure that it straight up looks cool, right? It's very important, you gotta have appeal. So I'll focus on his left arm to start. Now, if you're paying attention to the graph editor, you'll notice that I'm moving F curves around while the animation continues to play. See, this is the process I go through to create a pattern that feels good and looks cool, yet doesn't feel too predictable. Predictability is the key word here. A predictable cycle, you know, when you can clearly see the start and end, generally feels repetitive and boring, and that is exactly what you want to avoid. Onto the right arm, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing that I did with the left arm. That is, I'm gonna use the rotation of his head and his body language to help me animate his right arm. It's important to note, I still have to respect body mechanics, meaning get the mechanics of the arm working properly, then spend the time tweaking it to look good with the run. And then the fun continues as I animate in real time. Now, real time playback is crucial to my workflow because it allows me to see the changes I make to my F curves on the fly in real time while the sequence continues to loop. This, my friends, is a huge time saver. Now, if I wasn't animating in real time, that would mean I would make the changes to my curve, then press play, then watch and hope that the changes work and repeat that process. Not an official way of working in my opinion. For those curious to know the type of system I'm animating on, it's a Dell XPS from 2011 with a 256 SSD plus a two terabyte hard drive, 16 gigs of RAM, and I'm running a GeForce GTX 1060 and I'm animating in Maya 2019. All right, it's time to adjust our body arc. So what does the body arc imply? Well, it's very simple. When Jago's running and he's looking behind him for the bad guys, I want the body to be a little more upright and straight. And then when he faces forward again, I'll bring the body arc forward to lean into the run, right? This breaks up the body language as he runs. Now, if I kept the same arc during the whole run, it would most definitely feel flat and make the run feel unnatural. So I've touched over the entire body with a secondary animation pass. Now it is time for the camera. Yes, the camera gets a secondary animation pass as well. You see, I'm gonna add in a little rumble to make it feel like a handheld camera, and then I'm gonna animate the FOV. Both the handheld feel and the FOV will make the camera feel that much cooler. So the method is very straightforward. I like to put down a few keyframes manually, adjust the translation, and then simply make a few copies of those keys and start breaking up the pattern by adjusting the F curves. Again, I'm animating this entire shot straight ahead and relying on the real time playback in my camera viewport to make the necessary changes. This is gonna wrap up part two of this three part series as I continue to build up this animation into a very cool cinematic run. I highly I highly recommend you watch part one if you haven't yet. The render breakdown episode is also available as well on the channel. Now it is time for a WMA recap. All right, first off, a little refresher. This is the vanilla run cycle I created in part one of this series. Now, if you haven't seen the episode yet, be sure to check it out. Now I'm gonna split the screen. On the left side, I'm gonna keep the vanilla run cycle we did from episode 15. And on the right side, I'm gonna put step one of this episode, okay? Keep in mind that the right side is only step one, and I'm making this comparison to show you just how much of a transformation this animation goes through when you begin the process of secondary animation. Now, as I cycle through all seven steps, they may appear very subtle to your eyes, and that's totally normal, but I'll put up step one and seven at the very end for you to see the differences. Next, I established that the head was now the driving force, so I animated the comm in function of the head and also improved the head animation as well. Next, I continued to refine the body language pattern so that it felt natural and unpredictable. You see, you want to avoid the cliche timing of your character running, it looks left, then it looks right, then it looks back to the center. <laughs> That's a big no-no, but let's face it, let's be honest here, we've all done it at some point in our career. Next, I animated Jago's left arm, keeping in mind the tone and the body language of the run. 
Next, I animated Jago's right arm, again, keeping in mind the tone and body language of the run, and making sure that the arms move and feel like what you would imagine the arms would do in this type of run. Next, it was all about the body arc and creating contrast. Keeping the same body arc throughout the run would definitely make it feel flat, so I gave him an upright posture and a forward lean where I felt it was necessary in the run. The final step was dedicated to a secondary animation pass on the camera to create a more dynamic looking shot. I animated I animated the camera to have a handheld feel and I also animated the FOV. Now let's have a side-by-side -side look at the first and last step in this episode number 16. Now you can see the evolution of the shot and just for kicks, let me bring in the vanilla run cycle from episode 15 and put that at the beginning so that you have all three side-by-side -side to give you a real good view of what it looks like going into part three where i will polish this animation and make it pop and come to life even more and that my friends concludes this episode now for those who aren't aware the full process video for this episode is available to download for free for a limited time that is 68 video files totaling 13 plus hours of raw unedited animation process from start to end the original project file for this episode is also available to you as well you can open up the final animation scene on your own system explore it and have fun with it to get access to all this good stuff and more head on over to my gumroad page at gumroad.com slash watch me animate all links will be in the description below lastly i want to give a very special thank you to all my patrons for supporting watch me animate if you find my videos to be educational and helping you improve as an animator and would like to show your support for my work head on over to patreon.com slash watch me animate to make a small pledge thanks again for watching and i'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next episode as we continue with part three on how to animate a cinematic run in maya